Oh, okay. Oh, some trinket. That's the developer of the game, by the way. Uh, what engine is this game developed in? Interesting. Veins like the Hipworm is a horror official novel that is not suitable for children under 17 or for people that are easily disturbed. Would you like to reveal a list of topics that could potentially be upsetting to you? Sure, why not? Is that a leaf? That's 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 nice. Yes, condensed. Oh, yes, spoiler free. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your Canadian interest in veins like type worms. These topics are discussed and sometimes shown in the game. Trans. Oh, oof. Ouch. Okay. I, I didn't expect that, but well, that hurts. General dysphoria, blood gore, body horror, depression, self loathing, vomiting. Interesting. Oh. Uh huh. Beauty and rot. Rot in beauty. Zero per six ending. This is quite a nice. Yeah, this is quite nice for the. What do you call it? Main mini design. This is the name of the full game. Only chapter one and two and ending one are available. This is also really helpful. I love that one on the bottom because it just straight up tell us what to expect. That's nice. Interesting. Okay, before we start the game, let me <clears throat> let's uh, talk about why I've been gone for like two weeks again. Uh, this time I've I'm gone because actually I've been like tr uh, doing some administration for college. Yes, I'm going back to college. I need to finish it, which the, I, I I still haven't finished college. It it probably gone took like a year or a half a year and a half to, for me to finish, but. It shouldn't, uh, what do you call it, disturb my schedule at all. I just need to focus on the administration before. And also I need to take care of some of family stuff, which I don't want to talk here. And oops, I hit my glass glasses. And lastly, I was sick for like a week. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty horrible week for me. I, I just, I'm just unable to do anything and just like, dying there but anyway i've already recovered and yes we are back here to play the game interesting so yeah if you <clears throat> if you notice i'm still a little bit sick and still haven't fully recovered but yeah i'm recovered enough to do this i guess now so let's start playing the game shall we am i open recording i'm recording good it will be awkward if I'm not recording after all of that talk. Right? Right. Oh, the game paused if I switch the screen. I want to check if, like, uh, it's lagging. And, uh, maybe not. Probably not. Let's start the game, shall we? New game. Chapter 1, Corpse Soup. <laughs> okay. January... January 7th. Oh, okay, not... I love it! The aesthetic is so cool. And the sound design as well. Life is a s What? Oh, like Sisyphus? Okay. Life is a Sisyphan hellscape, and demons grip on their prover proverbial boulders starting to sleep. Ah. I love this! I, I really love this, actually, because it's... How, how do you explain it? The way the... Is it the cinemato cinematography? Is, is, is that the word? The way it's portrayed, everything is it's nice. Like, it's very coherent. They weren't really sure when they reached their breaking point. Look at this. Look at, look at the way they show everything. If they had to make a guess, though, it was right around when they watched the cops cart the body out of room 103 last week. Ah. If it wasn't then, it was today. When the shit head manager car waited for the room to be released for, from investigation. When all the hub, hub, hubbub died down and the man was 30 minutes away from clocking out, he pulled them aside and said they need to clean the blood out of one or three tubs. I'm not qualified to clean that, the man told him. People aren't going to ask. Carl Coates. Come on, we can afford a specia specialist. <laughs> really? <laughs> are, you, are you fucking serious, dude? Alright then. It's literally a biohazard. Only if it gets inside you. 
just be careful. Come on, Demian, please do us all a favor. Why don't you do us all a favor and go fuck yourself? Oh yeah, so, see? Fuck you, Demian thinks. Question? Yeah, fine, sure. No. It's not fine. It's not sure. Don't get them wrong. Demian is handling life. Decently enough. <laughs> yeah. They already had their earth shattering world ending breakdown last month. Oh, okay. I thought you will miss that game. <laughs> the result of that are still visible on Demian. They chop off so much of the long dark hair that Ma had always guessed about before bleaching and dyeing it as close to white as they could get it. The result looked like a toddler got a pair of scissors and a bottle of mustard. <laughs> Hey, I mean, it's pretty good. It's it's pretty nice. You didn't do it so rough, you know. People make mistakes. Everyone make mistakes. And it's okay to make mistakes, you know. It's okay to experiment and explore yourself further. Which a lot of people say it's not okay. <laughs> but it's okay. Because how else will we, will we be able to, what do you call it? Find ourselves, I guess. I guess that's the word. Luckily for Damien, it's it's a time to grow in and took a, a bit less slop sided. Still, though, to call it a sloppy hack job will be doing it a favor. And hey, there are perks to having short hair, such as. For one thing, Damien doesn't have to put it on a bun to keep it from dipping into a bathtub full of blood and bleach. Mm, yummy. <laughs> yeah, you should have just grown out your hair and then dip it in a bathtub full of blood and bleach and just consume the blood from it like mm, delicious i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about they're not sure why the restful night model <laughs> night model has such an allure to those with depths to pay and grudge to settle sure being in the outskirts of kingsfield beach city apartments that i guess we're going to be a bit more colorful than demon would expect this though this is really something else it's fucked up is what it is they may think to hit themselves while yanking off a black rubber glow Fascinating. Some average Tom who pissed off the wrong dick tried to flee a model in Lilo. Dick finds Tom and kills him to get even, and now poor little Harry has to clean up the mess Tom and Dick left behind. Damien wouldn't mind being in Dick's spot. <laughs> yeah, Damien. Relatable. Very relatable. They'll even take, an t take being Tom. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> so relatable, dude. Oh Jesus! What well, what is it? They clap a hand over their nose. The god, the good hand, not god hand, the one that hasn't been wrist deep in the body of fluids and hold back a gag. I mean, I mean, yeah, sure, sure. I I, I guess we need that detail to know that <laughs> Damien just doesn't put the the what the hand full of blood into their mouth. <laughs> The daughter permitting through the air is so thick in Damien's nose. Oh, that was my phone. Uh, why does it make notification? Hello? It's almost too sweet, but the foul stench of rust is definitely there, just as an undertone. Damien grits their teeth and squeezes their eyes shut. A few heavy breaths through the, their mouth will get them through the next few minutes, hopefully. Why don't you get some, you know, face cover, face protection, gloves? I, I don't know. This one little thing is all they need to do before they're off to work today. I mean, you, you do know it's biohazard, right? Then they can lie down in bed and do their best to forget about it. You can do this, Zal. Don't lose your shit. Calling out, cooking out inside. Is your name Zal? Interesting. The man sucks in a breath, takes their hands off their mouth and gets to scrubbing the ch chip ceramic. ceramic. This is, you, you can see that I almost didn't like stumble or fumble when reading this, because I think this is like such a nice, I don't know what they do, but I can read it very insanely, what do you call it? Very, 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 very clearly. Yeah, that's the word. Maybe it's the, what do you call it, the opacity, the outline, the, the opacity of the outline, the, the outline being clear, I don't know. Maybe it's the way the background looks good and not too distracting. Mm. They're finally at the point where the blood is coming off, instead of smearing around like dragging a slimy paintbrush on a canvas. 
Soon enough, it all collects at the bottom of the top and they can send it swirling down the drain. Oh, oh, hello there. Did you just slam the door? That's cool. You're all done. Margaret smells at Damien. Hello, Margaret. Game is now automatically safe. Oh, yeah. See? I love this. This is not very overwhelming and you can actually notice like when something pops up in the screen and like some other games, especially I feel like uh, games maybe like Dark Souls, I don't know, GTA, those kind of game sometimes suffers from like uh, you don't notice stuff, little text all around because there's just so much stuff going on and there's no highlighting things. I I'm not really sure what's the problem, honestly. Probably a lot of things going on, but here I can pinpoint clearly see that there's that text coming up. You can feel the nest is near behind it green, even though the nicest, the nicest may regret present herself with. Up. Uh, there's a sick end. There's six ending. How do I save? Piss off? Oh, piss off. The man clenches their fist and inhales through their teeth. Oh, yeah, that's how you save. Now that, I actually didn't notice. Please don't forget me. Oh, no, that's terrifying. <laughs> ah, escape back. So, if I can load this, that would be really appreciated, so I can save it. Uh... Okay, maybe we can. So, just let it be. The main conscious their face and inhales through their teeth. Yeah, finally, they say without looking up. It'll be nice to tell Carl's daughter to fuck off, but David can risk my spiritual. <laughs> okay, Damien. Maybe some other day. Like if Damien won the lottery. Or killed someone. Mm hmm, that's a nice foreboding you have there. Uh, Mario K, seeing that will take a toll on anyone. Margaret Scython look up at the at the midnight sky. Thick grey clouds roll in further by the second. It's going to rain or snow soon and Damien isn't sure which. Fine. Damien relaxes their grip on the cleaning cart's go the yellow handle. Nothing I can deal with anyway. I'll get over it, probably. Uh-huh. Alright. Yeah. I, uh, sure. <laughs> Margaret breaks eye contact. Demon studies the sky. There are long black streaks in the clouds. Yeah, it's going to snow soon. The stilted silence seems to drag on for hours. No doubt Margaret can tell she's not fooling Damien. She's the first to stop the torment. Well, I, um, I gotta get going. I'm gonna miss the bus. So, yeah, bye. Yeah, I'm going to. Damien says. Their stomachs rumbling so damn loud, as soon as they can, they're going to the city to suck up some, on some food. Their payments are going to be coming in a few days, so Damien can afford to get a little extra. Are you sure the payments is coming in? Rent is pretty much costing an arm and a leg, so any moment where they aren't dipping into their party set par par paltry, that's how you read it. Paltry saving is a moment well enjoyed. The two go on their separate ways. Thank god. Any longer any men would have. Nope, not going down that path. Not gonna tempt myself. <laughs> Why? Why are you not tempting yourself? You know, you should... Hello, Miriam. Look at this. I love this. Miriam leads over and calls out the greeting, called the greeting as Damien pushes the glass door open. Her voice is familiar to their ears. Hey, welcome to the quick stop shop. I'll be out in a second. Then get excited, web sir, it's just me. <laughs> it's, Dam it's Damien's flat response. There's a new lilt li in her tone that wasn't there beforehand. Oh, uh, Damien, how, hi, how it's going? It's going, I guess. They advance into the store. The light hanging above Damien and Miriam's head was everything in a cold tinge. Colorful fatty snacks lined the shelves to Damien's left. 
The stench of seafood is special strong today. Mmm, yummy. Damien swallows the bile rising in the back of the throat. Oh, 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 okay. Damien, what, why? <laughs> right now, okay, yeah, maybe I cannot use the Sims uh, negative interaction minus interaction thing, but you can see like a, a Sims negative minus interaction thing floating above my head right now when Damien says uh, that about seafood. I'm a seafood lover, okay? Fresh fish smells like the oceanic cucumber saliva that they've never bought into. Fresh fish, in fact, smells like a swamp on a hot summer day in sheer hatred. And today that hatred is seeping into every corner of the store. What, what, what do you mean? Okay, it's it's just the smell, but when you but when you get over it, fish are delicious. They're like they're like just delicious, you know, like they're meaty, they're full of vitamins, proteins, and also cheap and uh, what else? Da, 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 da. Delicious and fish and I don't know what else I could say to defend fish at this point. Uh, yeah, fishy. That's all. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah, I'm a seafood lover. I grew up like eating a lot of, like, not seafood actually, like fish. That's the word because I don't know if like you can consider swamp. Or river fish as a seafood. You, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Trying to keep their voice steady, they even ask. Did the fish guy come in here early or something? Miriam pauses. Her brows undoubtedly fur out the way it always is when she needs to think. Hmm. Silence? Um, I think so. I just clock in for her the night shift. You have to ask Luna tomorrow. She was at the store when we got our deliveries. Oh. Oh! <gasps> a high pitch milling punches through the muffled pop music ringing in Demon's ears. Kitty? They perk up and look around the store. It only takes a few seconds for them to find the culprit. Yeah, lock in. Large cut with orange fur speckled in white spots is curled up tight in a cardboard box. Oh, baby! A towel lines the interior. He looks comfortable with his eyes shut and tail twitching upwards. Oh, where's the baby? I need to see baby. The man smiles softly and kneels down to pat the top of his head. No, don't tell me we're not seeing the baby. No, no. <coughs> oh my god, it triggers my fucking throat. I'm still not that well. <coughs> Be right back. Okay, so actually I've been recording this for a bit after I finish my coving. <laughs> but it turns out that I forget to turn on my mic back again. So I just have to record it, like re-record it. Luckily, it's already been like only seven, eight minutes. So like. Luckily, it's only that long, so it's fine. Let's continue, shall we? I hope this guy is happy about it, though, they <clears throat> Sorry. They mark. Oh, baby, why, why don't they show us the baby? I want to see the baby. It's only now that Miriam's fox her head out of dial she's been so enraptured with. Thick mousy hair is tied up into a tight braid, her glasses shining under store line. Yeah, it's been chilling up a storm since I clock in. That's a good sign. I mean, he's warming up to you guys, they say without looking away from the cat. Oh no, I can to see the cat. Don't know if I ever told you this, but I used to have cat too, just like this one here. Me too. I, I really love cats. Really? Mm-hmm. She didn't know how to meow, so she just kind of screamed, but I thought it was funny name her Tabby, short for Tabisca. You know that I have like, uh, my cat back, my cat is like very loud. Yeah, how do you say it? Uh, he knows how to meow like a lot like he keeps meowing if you go outside the house for a bit he will just keep meowing at you I, I don't know why he will do that but okay um, I guess we are go just going to talk he's a very he's a also a very happy guy he keeps making biscuit everywhere and he's just nice you know I love him like the hot sauce yeah I don't even like the star it tastes like shit to me <laughs> no, why? They may look over their shoulder and lock gazes with Miriam. But Tabisca work is a cat name, so Tabi it is. Oh, that's so cute. Also, speaking of seafood, I I know one to like eat some fish. I, I don't know if like river fish and swamp fish are considered seafood, you know, like sea. Because like they live in a swamp or river. But yeah, I kind of want fish right now. 
I grew up on fish from when I was childhood, so yeah, from, from fish and seafood, so yeah, I, re I really love them. Sending up, they grab a nearby shopping basket and start to throw lemon packets in into it. Darren figures it's a good idea to leave out the part where Pa here trapped me with the card and didn't tell them. <laughs> pa, why the fuck did you do that? <laughs> Mentioning the mirror how they found her bread in the woods days later will probably put a damper on the mood. Maybe you should do that. Maybe you should be like me, strive to make every conversation as awkward as possible. <laughs> Catching out and on on and on about how funny the mean is, Miriam sets a plastic milk crate, crate filled with candid brains. While kneeling, she reaches out to pet a cat. I don't think we've all thought of an official name for a little mascot yet. Luna calls him flip flop, but I think it's more of a juice to me. Mmm, yes, durian juice. You should you should name him durian juice. Or maybe for the flip flop, you should name him the Australian version of it. Thong. Yeah, that'll be great. Admiral Thong, like the <laughs> The fucking Star Wars thing. The response is non-comital. Hmm. Miriam changed the subject instead of letting Damien go. So, um, by the way, how's work? They already regret psyching up a conversation. Our eyes stay focused on instant meals. Uh, let me check again if I record. Yeah? Yeah, I'm talking, I think. TV dinners and cheap noodles turn the stomach, but it's all Damien can afford. Game is not safe. I don't think you want to know the answer. I clean a guy's blood out of the tub. If I stay for one more day, I'm going to get someone. Don't ask me that. Oh, you know. You know what I'm going to say. It's okay. Damien holds back their real thugs. Oh. Why did you do that, Damien? Never a dull day there, I guess. Unrelated, but I think I'm gonna pick up uh, Lucy today. Maybe two. Her plain face contorts into a sympathetic cringe. <laughs> I, I, as a non-native English speaker, I'm, I'm not really sure what that means. I only know cringe. I think, I think like Mir Miriam thought we are cringe, Damien. So yeah. That bad, huh? Yeah. Damien only smokes after a particularly stressful sh shift. Shit. Shit and shift. It's the same thing, you know. Thank God the back and forth ends soon afterwards. Demons already exhausted from dealing with people all day. More like all week if they are being honest. The last thing they need is more insanity before they can go home and sleep. The cashier, a middle-aged woman named Emily, takes a few seconds to lecture Demon on how the shop really shouldn't be selling them loose cigarettes. So they better watch out who they tell. Demon bites their tongue to stop themselves from telling Emily to can it and give them the loose already. Uh huh. Ah, uh, the snow started. There's already a light dusting on the sidewalk, and fat snowflake drips to the ground. You know what time? What time is it good for? Making snowmans. You should do that. Damien puts pulls the shoulder of their jacket up further to the neck. They'll probably get something better soon. The zipper on this thing's already busted, so it just hangs off their lanky frame. Hopefully by next week they'll be able be able to buy a new one. Should you buy a new one? Like it's only the zipper, right? That's the problem you can like, you know, ask, pay someone to fix it. Because yeah, or fix it yourself because you know you're willing to pay to buy a jacket. So what's wrong with willing to pay someone just to fix the jacket? You know what I'm saying? Diamond yeah, puts in extra for time specifically for the jacket funds. Leaning back against shop brick while Simon lights a cigarette and takes a long drag. It is awful and doesn't feel great. Still, Damien figures that it's the lesser of two evils when compared to what else they could be doing to themselves. You know, I have a little tips for like... Not a little tips, what, what do you call it? A little history with the concept of lesser evil. It's a... It's a pretty interesting thing and I guess... It, it not only affects me, but it affects a lot of people. It's not about minor things like cigarettes, I guess, but what I'm trying to say is sometimes you pick the lesser evil to avoid the bigger evil, but in the end it turns into a bigger evil itself. Maybe because it just like grows bigger and stronger. Or maybe because the lesser evil comments with the bigger evil, and you cannot control it at all. And yeah. 
So sometimes it's better just not to choose at all. To just abandon the concept of lesser evil. Just go away from it. But yeah, I'm not talking about cigars. If you want to smoke, go smoke. They blow the smoke all out into the air. In all honesty, it's peaceful out here. They've never been a big fan of the draft feeling that early January evening held, but something about this seems different. Good, but different. For a moment, it almost feels like the main troubles are far, far behind them. No worries about paying their rent. Everyone's leaving them alone. And the gore they washed down 103 rain is a distant memory that felt years old. Hello. The shop door swings open and the illusion is broken. Memes with crunching snow. Shoot, I love the sound effect. Hey, you shouldn't be out for too long, you'll freeze out here. Frigid winter air, air bites the demon's cheeks. The stench of smoke wafts up further into the falling snow. They lower their hand exhale. Steam clouds puff up into front in front of thin lips. They tower over her. Then give me that. Demon rolls. You know my place doesn't allow smoking. She starts down at her feet. I know, but... But nothing. I can't afford the ass whooping again. <laughs> but nothing. Miriam swallows stick. She clicks her fingernails against one another, looking as if she really likes to hide within her work uniform. It's too big for her. The poorly tailored dress and apron hangs past her hands. Oh no. Come on, it's cold out. Ken, I told you. I just don't want you to get hypothermia or anything. She finds it in herself to say. Her cheeks are red. The men really hope it's because of the cold, but they know better. Hey, um, if you ever... I mean, never mind. <laughs> Take care of yourself, alright? <laughs> okay. Don't pity me. Yeah, sure. The man finishes their cigarette, snaps it, and tosses it into a can once they're sure it's out. Suddenly, they would like to be anywhere else but here. See you next week, I guess. Yeah. They turn their back towards Miriam and start walking home. Hey, I, uh, if you're free anytime soon, I'm on night shift, so I've got free time during the day. So if you ever want to get coffee or something, be seeing you, Webster. They Wait, is your name Miriam Webster? <laughs> yeah, fucking damn it. Wait, no, no, no. Are you are you making a joke or her name is really is Miriam Webster? Because I will be like bamboozled. They've been beating around the bus regarding whatever feeling Miriam has for them. Demon doesn't think she'd be we weird about it, but they never had good results telling people about their asexuality. Oh. Don't keep Emily waiting back there. Right. Demon didn't mean to be so harsh to her. In all honesty, talking to Miriam doesn't make them want to pull themselves out of their skin. They're just... They don't have the words to describe it. What? They're just too nice? Is that, is that, is that what you're trying to say? She's a bit of a dollar in their opinion. Definitely I'm an observant as hell, but they wouldn't call her a dick or something. But it'd be weird to turn around and clarify now. With unspoken words on the brain, Demon keeps their head down and walks home. I enjoy this so far. Game is now automatically saved. Save. That keeps happening. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Miriam wasn't kidding. It is cold tonight. The tips of Damien's fingers are already numb by the time they make the trek back to the restful night model. Okay, pause time again just to make sure that I'm recording the audio. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So, I did a mistake. Uh, While well, I was like checking for the recording, I also checked uh, the developer message to me. And I just remember that I'm supposed to check the Steam version instead of the HIO version, which I'm playing right now. So, the next clip you see after this is after me switching to the Steam version. Yeah, Steam version has a little bit little bit of different that I noticed, such as uh, more content warning that appear, and you have like more options to like 
choose whether or not con some content warning will appear uh, soon before an event or something like that and also um there's some crowd details that you can like check here like you can see that there's a bunch of crowd now which wasn't there before which is really cool but yeah that's all let's continue playing the game shall we miriam wasn't kidding it is called tonight the tips of the main swingers are already numb by the time they make the trek back to the restful night model <laughs> Restful night, model! No if I can see. The blank midnight sky only draws their exhausted eyes to the neon pink sign hanging in the parking lot. Look at this, this is amazing. The oil is flickering on and off. It's almost ready, they think. Oh, hello there. The nicely voice that feels like razors in Damien's brain breaks their concentration. Hey Damien. Fuck. They look up to see Carl's face twisted in some parody of an apologetic smile. Yeah, what's wrong, sir? Please don't. You of all people know how badly the company is doing these days. And you're not making it easier. Oh, no. <laughs> uh-huh. The model's barely making it as it is. Whose fault is that? Oh. So I hope you understand that I might not be able to give you your overtime pay this week. I'll be there the next time, I promise. I hope you drown in your own piss. Sure, I can wait. There goes the jacket funds. Well, I won't hold you up for long. It's cold out, I know you, and I know you want to rest. You don't seem to have been sleeping well lately. Wow, I wonder why. <laughs> Thank you, sir. See you tomorrow. See you. They part ways, the men walking towards the mall with a pounding heart, clenched jaw, and shaking fist. The wall to their room is familiar. Go up the crumbling concrete stairs, turn left, and head into room 205. Don't shit where you eat or sleep is what the has had to tell themselves for four years. Then their new arrangement with Carl, eat and sleep are pretty much interchangeable. Yeah. Next part of the routine. Slot the key in the sticky lock, jiggle it around a bit, wish they had enough money to live anywhere else except the motel. Why is it lagging a little bit? Huh. I'm curious. Let me check my recording. Seems fine. I hope so. In a weird way, Demon does feel a bit grateful towards Carl. Even if they were living in one of the more rundown rooms that he was cheap to, too cheap to fix, it was still a place to sleep on top of their payments. All in cash and under the table, of course. All the men had to do in exchange was a little more work. Like cleaning up after a dead body. Oh. Oopsie. Step 3. The men slams their shoulder against the door and cringe at the stings of pain. The lock seems to get worse in the colder weather. Nope. Oh. <laughs> what was that? Oh no, I love the effects. <laughs> I feel like the, the, the effects were too excessive. But that's cool. The men swipes the snow off the doorstep and throw themselves at the booty game. I don't know. It pops open way too easily, sending the men stumbling to the, the threadbare carpet. The ramen bags scatter across the floor. Groaning loudly, the men sits up and wraps their shoulder. At least it didn't dislocate, but the bones sure hurt like hell. They like to lie there for a few hours, unblinking and unmoving, but in the end, the men slams their door, door shut and crouches down to pick up their food. The model room air conditioner rattles in Damien's ears, drawing the mildewy others away from another night. It's fine, it's fine. Nothing broke. Everything's fine. Damien swings the bag of food in the net stand. Maybe it'd be nice to have a bath and relax before they eat. Their fingers still feel so unclean. Even though the gloves and the cleaning chemicals. Even, even through. Okay. The bathroom light buzzes at an uncomfortable volume. Damien pulls the short curtain back and stares down at the top. Instead of relief, stress floods their veins. Even if their top is bleached clean enough to eat from, their mind eyes bring back memories of a crimson sludge and skittering cockroaches slurping at, at their meal. Nope, maybe tomorrow. They shut the curtain. Interesting. 
The men turn on the scene to scrub their hands until their fingertips are raw. They look up and stare at the trash bag covering their mirror. It was for their own good, really. Looking at their own reflection only makes them miserable. Ah. Uh, the men really think they're lucky stars they didn't grow up to be a neat freak. Otherwise, they'd be going even more insane than they, they already are. Oh, I know some people that are neat freaks and oh my god. <laughs> my head is going kaboom sometimes when interacting with them. Wriggling maggots, steaming vomit and crawling beetles in the moldy walls is one thing. But I mean we'll get over it like they always do. Do you? They have to. Huh, okay. If they break down again, who knows what they'll do. Quit? Get fired? Who knows? Shit. Demon yearns through the pain. Looking down, they see the back of their left hand drip with blood. The right one grips the scrubber tight enough to dent the palm. Scything deep, Demon puts down the brush and drains their hand under the hot water. Sting sensation fills their fingers. Maybe because it's the hot water? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Rivers of pink flow into the drain, the remnants of water down blood leaving its mark in the basin. They've been scything a lot these days. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> Demian can really help it. The next few minutes are a bit blur. Or a bit of a blur. Demian didn't have any bandages, so the best they could do was clean out the abrasion and hope it would scab up in the meanwhile. After that, dinner consisted of a plastic cup of noodles made in the model microwave. All the nights of ramen as their meals are probably going to come and bite them in the ass one of this day, but they are too tired to care. Besides, they can mask the plastically flavor with stronger seasonings. Damn, Demon whistled themselves was throwing out the window. The snow is growing more and more intense by the minute. As much as they hate this place, Demon glad they aren't on the streets anymore. Nights like this will be nothing short of misery. But hey, they have a roof over their head and stable job. <laughs> stable job, yeah. A like a roof and a slow sucking job, but still a roof and a job. <laughs> yeah. So maybe it isn't that bad here. You sure? Yep, there we go. Any and all good feelings Damien might have been collecting are evaporated at the moment the music starts. The music? It's loud. Oh yeah, music. It's loud thumbing and sort of the ever loving shit out of them. They mean jolts. Their heaven slips under the head. No! Fuck! Orange breath spills across the table onto the floor and splashes into their scratched hand. Ow! Leaping up to their feet and knocking over a plastic chair, they even does their best to clear up the mess, grumbling to themselves the whole way. Their hands hurt so bad. Y yeah! Mixtures of the heat and the seasoning only irritates the raw skin. Their gaze turns upward towards the wall they share with the music busting neighbor. Unless Damien has the decency to wear headphones when they want to play music so loud it makes their bones rattle. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up for the love of fucking god, shut the music off. There she go and give a piece of their mind grows deeper. Confront? Give up. C confront, obviously. Fuck it. Damien can do this anymore. Is it a good idea to go outside while it's snowing? Maybe. Damien doesn't even trust the noodle a cup. If they listen to this bullshit any longer, they are going to go insane. Slinging their jacket back over the shoulder, Damien clutches their model and stumps outside. Turning their heel, they head to the door directly to the left of their model room. The thin plastic is practically shaking. The rusting decals announcing which room it, it is could fall ahead in a second. Hey. I got a same message. Done. Hey, hey! Demon screams. Their hollers are down out into a whisper. Biting the inside of their mouth, Demon bangs on the door again. Turn down the music, some of us are trying to sleep. Pressing their ear against the side of the door only gives Demon a headache. All they can hear are teeth chattering bass and screaming lyrics. No signs of life. They read in a letter to lower the volume and slide it in their door if they had a pen and paper. Pinching the bit of their nose, they pull away and try to peer through the curtains. No movement. Interesting. It's pointless, isn't it? Not like whoever's in there could hear or care. Demons get to learn how to pick better battles anyway. Wait, <laughs> my throat, sorry. New priority, food. 
Cheese curves would make a decent replacement for dinner right about now. Mmm, yummy. The vending machine near the lobby still sort of work. A fact that saved Demi and Escort a few times before. Okay. I can still hear the music. Content warning, depression, self-loathing, vomiting, audio implied, visual. Interesting. Fat stuff like skips on falling. It does the concrete, the vending machine, even the short curls of Damien's hair. They pull up their jacket suit around their neck and kick the side of the machine again. <laughs> oh, come on already. God, they can still hear the music. It's faint but undoubtedly there. This went of the, some of their dominant cash on these cheese curls. And by God, they are going to get those cheese curls. <laughs> it's all they are going to. Uh, sorry, I'm coughing it. Yeah, I'm still not 100% well. The main portion of their meant to last until their next paycheck. Taking an extra will lead to them needing to skip a meal at some point. Come on, give it! Demon kicks the machine for the third time. The bag is stuck in the inner spiral. It wobbles, crinkles, and flops forward. But it won't fall. Come on! Why are they getting so frantic? Are they about to have another breakdown? Demon hopes not. They can afford it. They can afford to quit their stupid job of cleaning up shit and blood and piss and sweat drenched mattresses. If they do, they'll lose their Rochefield room and their revolting door of awful neighbors. Huh. I wonder. And if they do that, there's no way in hell they'd be ever ever be able to achieve that dream of working until they die and start doing something meaningful with their life like they really want and they mean can have that. Can they? They mean it needs to be a cock in a machine because there's no spot for spiteful and hateful assholes wanting to make music of their own and actually do something with their life instead of cleaning their filth of the piece of this piece of shit over and over with another spite until they kick their miserable bucket and... I can't fucking do this anymore. Demon kicks the machine with a hard weep. Oh, there isn't even a dent inside. The cheese curls finally drop into the slot. <gasps> Yay! It's an insult at this point. <laughs> Demon kneels in front of the machine and shoves their face into the into their hands. They hate the sobbing that bursts out from their throat. They already went through this last month. There's no reason to be blubbering all over again. It's humiliating. It's not about the cheese curls, but it sure was the last straw. <laughs> oh no, the tears burned down their cheeks. It feels like acid. Demon Zhao, 20 years old, is on a fast track to waste their entire life away. And instead of trying to fix it, they're bowling over their own fate like some helpless baby. I mean, that's part of trying to fix it, you know? There's nothing wrong with crying about it. There's nothing wrong with being frustrated as well. They made pretty sure they would have been crying in the snow for a good 15 minutes if the sound of peeking didn't snap them out of it. They scramble to their feet quickly, scrubbing their face of any tear stains and sniffling the snow back in. The gurgling is faint and seer, but there, there's no way to ignore it. Oh, hello there. They don't approach out of goodness in their heart. If someone's spewing their guts in the building vicinity, they means the one who has to clean it. It's just easier to scrub a fresh woman instead of leaving it overnight. Running a corner, they come face to face with a woman doubled over and barfing in the building's dumpster. Hey, they say, you've always steady but I'm sure. Look at that, that's so cool, I love it, the design. Hey, you good? She's speaking a lot. Demon tries to get her attention again. Dude, hey, dude. Oh. The barfing sees, hopefully permanently, they think, and the woman snaps her head up. White eyes behind crooked glass peer right at them. Thick hair sticks to her face. Even in the dead of the winter, she's sweating. Huh. It's so bad that she shimmer off the neon sign hanging above the hotel is reflected on her temple. The look in her eyes is indescribable. It's not the kind of look that any human would reasonably give to someone. Instinct kicks in. This woman looks like she's barely pushing past five feet. Her legs dangle a good length of the, gro of the ground. They can get a decent gotcha of her built underneath the oversized sweater, but the main thing they could take her on in self-defense if needed. They were definitely underweight themselves, but they are more than six feet. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
they could just r run give her a jab in the neck and run right you or you could just run she's silent very silent demon can even hear her breathe she's going through the motions her shoulders and chest rise and fall like expected but the sounds of her gasping fall just short of demon's ear they take a step back why did their hands become so clammy a thrashing heartbeat brings pain to demon's chest her gaze feels wrong that's the only way this demon can describe it wrong as if she's looking past them past their skins and into their bones please don't look for me demon snaps out of the unsettled supper huh huh i don't want it anymore please her voice is hoarse and low don't don't bring it back i just want to rest Demon will be lying if they implied they understood what the fuck she was on about. Are you drunk? She doesn't respond. Before Demon can stop her, she drops to the ground and takes off running. So it's on the garbage can now, whatever it is? Something more like it. Yeah, definitely drunk. She didn't launch at Demian or make any threats, but their unease doesn't lighten. Something's wrong. Demon looks towards the dumpster. No, don't do that. Murmuring drifts up from the cold metal. The more Demon strains their ears, the clearer it becomes in their mind. As if a voice was cooing directly into the, in the folds of their brain, in a warm embrace made to, to lure. Whatever is in, it's in there, it's not just the result of a drunkard emptying her stomach. Ah. I can sense your pain, your anguish. I feel the whisper of a broken heart cling to life. Your strength is taken away by those who have wronged you. Bit together, never anything, there's nothing. But I can repair you. I can give you the strength of a god. Together we can lash out against those who have hurt you in kind. And all you have to do is let me in. Look inwards, look away, Stay inwards. It sounds beautiful. Just one little peek couldn't hurt. Right? The main stands under their tip of suddenly insane. They only take one look and back away if it's dangerous. A look doesn't hurt. Is it? A look can ruin their life. A word could, but not a look. Kind in horror, body hor body horror, gore, kind in warning, I mean, gore official, no blood. Laying top of trash is thick coating of dark slime. It has a strange sheen to it. The best comparison Demon had was like the color of needles on evergreen trees. There's none of the luster that leaves taunted. If anything, this thing seems to defy the law of physics. Any and all light that would eliminate its mass simply seemed to vanish before it could hit the shivering ooze. Holy shit, Demon excels. It's... beautiful? Breathing. Ah. Channels of its slime inch forward before pulling back. It brings Demon back to the days when they were little and watching the waves on the beach. It's like a little piece of the ocean, corrupted and plopped down in the slums of this wretched city. I could promise fill their vapid little head. Its voice is heavenly, mesmerizing even. It pulsates, resonating with their very core, as if it wants to be part of them. No, not that it wants to be. It is a part of them. It's a part of Damien that had been separated from the, them since the day they were born. All that's happening now is an inev inevitable reunion. Yes, yes, that's right. That's why they've always feel so empty and incomplete. Because they were never whole. But they will be now. Lord closer and closer towards it, Damien can even help can help can even help themselves. Rushing out, bony fingers brush against the creature to feel the pouring of its heartbeat against Damien's fingertips. Oh crunchy.
It cramps on tight. Oh shit. Bad choice, Zell. The trance is shattered. What the fuck were they thinking? This thing isn't a part of them. It didn't whisper about the powers of God and whatever it was, it it was so awful it made that girl sick. That couldn't have been their own idea. Damn it smarter than that. It's already too late to rectify the, their error. They yank their hands out of the dumpster, the force of which they pull back sends the men tumbling to the ground. The fluffy snow does nothing to break their fall. The creatures latch just latch on their on their hand now, sent from its metal prison into the world. The men tries to fling it off and then pry it away from their hands. Nothing helps. It only gets worse. Strong in emotion, the monster crawls up their skin. It doesn't stop. It doesn't slow down. It doesn't even hesitate. Get off, get off, get off, get off, get off! Away from me! There is a voice in Damien's head that is not their own. Blue. Need to blue. Blue man set free. It won't stop. Nothing Damien can do make it stop. It's upon their throat in the blink of an eye. Unpleasant sensations sing through the panic that dulls Damien's pain. Prickling skin is what alerts them to the tightness around their thin neck. The windpipe squeezes shut. It's as if Damien's a mere observer in their own body. Damien tries to gasp for air. The more mouth is forced open by the creature. Throat and nostrils are filled with squirming maggots, melted and swirled together into a barely conscious mucus. Invading, swarming, sprouting. Eyes wide, screaming silence. Roots under the skin, wrapping around bones. Muscle fusing with tendrils. Heart with something, fish invading. Thoke slurring and dim. Become one with me. Indeed. Chapter 2, God in the Gutter, January 8th. Interesting. So far, I actually enjoy this. This is very cinematic and lovely. Like just to see everything, everything there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think I will end the video right here, right now, because it's been good a while. Let me do a little review. I absolutely love the cinematography and the sound design. It's amazing. The text is also very readable. I don't know why. Uh, I honestly doesn't have much criticism for it. It's it's good. It's nice. It's well designed. Maybe probably, okay, maybe probably the optimization, I don't know why, but this game sometimes slows down and lags for me. I don't know why that happens, but that's kind of unfortunate. Either way, yeah, that's all for the game. I hope you enjoy it. See you later then in the next video, episode, chapter, whatever. Bye-bye, little worms.